Hello, welcome to Grace Lutheran Church in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, this third Sunday of Advent. Our worship team this week is, I'm Pastor Susan Christian, and our sermon presenter is going to be Pastor Nicole Benke Welke. Our assisting minister is Don Christian, technology is Steve Garrison and Karen Torkelson, projection Lisa Elliott, and liturgy Sandy Pellicori. Uh, the church has lost uh, one of its faithful members, Arlene Strand, died on December 4th. We will continue our parking lot Holy Communion service each Sunday through December at 9 a.m. Park within two blocks of Grace Church and turn your radio to FM 104.1. ELCA World Hunger is, has a matching gift uh, donation going. If you donate now, your gift will go further because every dollar donated until the end of 2020 will be matched up to $265,000. Just go to the elc.org slash hunger to donate. Our Christmas services scheduled on Christmas Eve, December 20, Tuesday, December 24th. Children's worship available on YouTube. 4 p.m. live Grace Parking Lot Worship with Holy Communion. Candlelight service available on YouTube, December 27th through the first Sunday after Christmas on YouTube. For the live parking lot service on Christmas Eve, each car will be provided with communion cups and bulletins. Please bring flashlights to read and sing to Silent Night. And I'm happy and pleased to announce that our Christmas with Friends dinner is going to happen. That'll be on December 25th. It will be this year just a takeout and delivery from the church. Timing is the same, 11 through 1. And please call Debbie or Sandy at 715-453-4066 to request, request a delivery or reserve a time to pick up your meal. There will be no in-person dining this year. And now I'd like to thank all of the members of Grace who kept me in their thoughts and prayers while I was sick. I'm in the recovery phase, but I've been given a uh, good to go from the Lincoln County Health Department. Your prayers and thoughts and calls made all the difference to me recovering. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Our first hymn this morning is Here I Am to Worship. Open my eyes, let me 
Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We've not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, Hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven. And you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love and comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. The word Advent means coming. The third candle that we light this week can symbolize comfort as in comfort and joy. Continue to do great things for us. Give us your gift of comfort and joy as we await your coming. Amen. We will now pray the prayer of the day. Stir up the wills of your faithful people. Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that, anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will now have our first reading. First reading is Isaiah 61. Though the people had returned to Jerusalem from exile in Babylon, they continued to face hardship and oppression. In the language of the Jubilee year, described in Leviticus 25, the prophet moved by the Spirit of God announces deliverance for those who are oppressed and comfort those who mourn. The Spirit of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release the prisoners, 
to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planning of the Lord to display his glory. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our children's message this morning is a story that has been written for this time. Good morning, kids. How are you today? You're doing great. That's wonderful. That's what I like to hear. Well, I have a story for you this morning, and it's called The Christmas Bird. And I think you'll all like it. Do you like Christmas stories? There's all sorts of them out there. My page is stuck. Weary and winsome, the little bird hovered over the tiny village in Palestine, touched by the quiet moon, her shadow dropped over the inn. If I knew the way south like the other birds, she said to herself, as she always did on the coldest nights of the year, I would winter in Palestine. Hugging her wings to her drab brown breast, she hopped into the stable and chirped a greeting to the cow who shared her home. She caught the black eye at the hard dirt floor where sometimes she found bits of grain amid the shaft. Hush, my friend, lowed the old brown cow. The babe is asleep. See, here's a picture of the, the cow and the bird together. Startled, the bird flew up and landed on the cow's bony shoulder. Why, there is a child in the manger, she whispered, confused. Whatever is happening? Something special, I think, murmured the cow. The child's mother inched closer to the flickering fire her husband had built. Her blue hood tumbled from her shiny black hair. She raised herself on one elbow and looked at the baby. It is a beautiful night to be born, she said. It is a terrible night to be born, thought the bird, ignoring millions of brilliant stars cartwheeling over the sky. It's cold. I cannot warm myself. And here's the, the baby and the mother and the father and the cow and the bird. Ah, said the cow, more visitors. Two young boys and their father stumbled into the stable and pressed themselves against the far wall. They leaned heavily on their staves, breathing hard from a long run through the frosty air. Silently, the older shepherd removed his cloak and offered it to the young woman's husband. 
who draped it gently over his wife. Eyeing the small fire, the bird hopped toward the manger. It's too cold for the child, she chirped nervously. Even as she said it, the baby stirred in the straw. The bird crept toward the, the fire circle and peered at the embers. Lacking fuel, tiny bits of fire struggled in the sooty ashes. The bird moved closer to the flames until she fe felt the fire at her feet. She began to beat her wings, slowly at first, then faster until the sparks blazed into flame. Her tired wings began to throb, but she beat them even harder until the flames rose high, throwing long shadows on the walls. Without a word, the shepherds began to break their staves and cast the pieces on the fire. Soon the wood kindled and the flames bathed the family in red gold light. There was no sound but for the breathing of the baby and the steady whooshing of the bird's wings. The little bird turned her head from the blast of heat and fanned the flames until they crackled and roared with warmth. Might have been awful cold in that manger for the baby and his parents. At last satisfied and exhausted, she lurched away and settled on the side of the manger. The bird stared down at her breast in amazement. Why, I've singed myself, she said. Her plain brown feathers were deep red, as red as any pomegranate. Pomegranate is some fruit, in case you didn't know that. Little bird, the young mother called softly, extending her hand. Come, Robin. Flying to the outstretched hand, the bird thought, she knows my name. How does she know my name? Kind Robin, the young woman whispered, stroking the bird's bright feathers. When you fly away, keep the morning sun over your brave left wing. I will remember, the bird chirped. I will remember you, Robin, and keep you in my heart. The little bird left at dawn, flying south over the brown hills of Palestine with the winter sun rising on her left wing. In time, her red-breasted children and her children's children scattered throughout the world. Before they left, she shared with them the story of their bright red feathers and the secret of flying to the sun. And even today, the robin's children soar south in winter, but they all return home to Harold the first cold days of spring and beat their strong small wings and flash their fine feather, red feathers like fire in the snow. Well, I bet all of you have seen a, a robin in the spring right after the snow starts disappearing. And the next spring when you see one, think about the story of the Christmas bird. Thank you for coming up and joining me. We will now have our gospel reading and our sermon. And Pastor Nicole Stinky Welke will lead that for you. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the first chapter. Hear now the good news. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, 
Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed. I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. <clears throat> are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do they say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah? nor the prophet. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing the gospel of our Lord. Please pray with me. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Help us to see your light as we hear your word today. Amen. Who are you? There are so many ways that we can interpret this statement. I don't quite phrase it this way when I walk into someone's home and want to know who they are that first time or when I talk to their families. But it is something that I want to know when I work with so many of my hospice patients. I desire to figure out not only their name, but who they are as people and about their faith. And if faith is even important to them. I want to hear their story. I want to witness to what their experience is. As a chaplain, I'm afforded this profound space so often to witness to people's grief, but also their joy, even when it comes to the end of life. Yes, I witness joy. Today with it being the third Sunday of Advent, the theme often is attributed to this week is joy. Joy comes in so many different ways. It is seen and experienced by others often differently than we may perceive it. Today in our gospel, we could look at the way John the Baptist responds as joy-filled or something much different. Some would say he is almost bringing himself down or minimizing who he is. But I believe his response is filled with joy. And here's why I believe this. John the Baptist in the gospel today spends time telling us about everyone and everything he is not. He covers the ways he is not qualified. It is a bunch of negative confessions, but joy comes with the why he does this. John speaks this way to witness to Jesus, the one who is yet to come. John speaks to bear witness to Jesus, the Messiah, and all the joy that is to come with him. In my opinion, John the Baptist had one of the most challenging roles, but also one of the most amazing roles. John was bearing witness to Jesus, who people did not yet know. And speaking of joy that was to come with him, and the people had yet to experience the immensity of this joy. They were taking John's word at this point. And if you remember from last week's gospel, John was a little bit of an odd guy. But this Sunday in Advent, the third Sunday, we celebrate joy. But today it's more than just joy. 
that we hear from John or the joy that we have as we wait for Christ's birth or the joy that comes from anxiously awaiting Christ's return. Today, I also believe joy is experienced in each one of us and the ways we are called to witness to our faith. Now you might be thinking, nothing about vocally witnessing my faith to someone else sounds joyful. I hear you, but I want to challenge all of us to try something this week with your family. Maybe it's a friend on a phone and see what happens. Because if we can do it with family and friends, we can even do it with strangers. We learn how to be witnesses best when we practice. So that is what we are going to do this week. I want you to take a few moments to talk with your family or a friend to start with. Since we live in the world of COVID, it might be on the phone, but it's okay. It can still work. Maybe you even call up that person who always sat next to you in the pew that you maybe haven't seen in months to do this activity because we all know it's probably the exact same person that sat next to you for years because as Lutherans, you know, we all have those assigned imaginary seats. Now, when you talk with them, I want to encourage you to share with that person, what makes you excited about church here and your faith? Remember, when you go to share it, it doesn't need to be anything eloquent or perfectly stated in prose. Rather, just take this time to share honestly with one another what makes you excited about church here and your faith. This is not a challenge I want you to take lightly because I've done this before with others and there's a something amazing that can happen. It doesn't need to be long or hard, but I wanna encourage you to try to see if you can experience that same amazingness that I have seen and witnessed. So let me share what I've experienced when I've done this in the past with others. Joy, witness, and more joy. This is what happens when you take those few moments this week to do this. You will become a witness to what makes you excited about church here and your faith. And I hope that you not only see, but you experience the joy that is lived out in that very moment. This joy is real and authentic. It can't be manufactured or created. I've seen it happen. You, you will practice exactly what John the Baptist does in the gospel today. By sharing your faith, you even become bearers of Jesus, the light in the world and to each other. Even when this is difficult, remember John when he witnessed he did not do it in a way that sounded pretty. Rather, it was a list of negative confessions, which really were not all that articulate either. But they were honest and real, and that's what made his witness perfect. You just need to be honest. And when it comes to sharing your faith, that's all it takes. Keep practicing sharing your faith with each other and in your lives. And the joy that comes by doing so, I believe you will start to experience living within you, not only in new ways, but also living in your world, in this community, in new ways. The joy that we are searching for as people and as a world as things seem to constantly change due to the virus. I believe if we do this, there will be light that emerges in our world anew. The joy that is found in Christ, that is in you, 
and me will be the light in the world today. Amen. Our next hymn is Days of Elijah.
let us profess our faith together in words of the Nicene Creed. In this season of Advent, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. The scriptures, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming the good news. Strengthen the witness of those who contribute their proclamation, prayers, and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts and the meditation of their souls. Hear us, O God. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and call us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, storm, or conflict. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran World Hunger, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all relief organizations in their efforts. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. You promise us an eternal home. Send your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Help those who are ill and struggling in body, mind, and spirit. We pray for those who care for them. Lift the heads and hearts of the weary. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love. Announce all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. 
Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is now the time that we would normally take our offering. You are welcome to bring your mail your offering in or drop it by here at church. Our special offering for this month is for the Kinship House. We give thanks for the gifts of time, talent, and treasures that continue the ministries here at Grace. We remember our gifts to this month's special offering. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Please receive the blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey. Now and forever. Our sending him today is Jesus the Messiah.